When one comes to mind of the overall brand of strategy games in gaming, many names come to mind. Civ, Age of Empires, the older Warhammer games, Total War, the list goes on. These strategy games were the building blocks of any strategy game today. The least likely game that you would think has any strategy in it is actually one of the most popular that I've been kind of holding back on talking about in this channel. Yeah, we all know it, it's Minecraft. This sandbox RPG that's also a survival crafting and a little bit of everything doesn't really offer much for us strategic mind, right? Or does it? From the building to the combat in this video, we will cover the strategy and intricacies that makes Minecraft strategic. Being the most extensive part of Minecraft, as well as its biggest hook in terms of how much freedom and creativity the game provides, the building does not have much to it, in terms of a strategic approach at least, or so we thought. Having the power to make literally anything in the vanilla version of the game no less, as long as you have the materials you need and the necessary know-how, offer an amazing strategic advantage over the game's mobs as well as your own friends. From traps to explosives to explosive traps, TNT launchers, flying contraptions, and many, many more, I've seen plenty of people Devoted Minecraft veterans create straight up bombers that fly and drop TNT. Sometimes the best strategy in approaching as a problem in the game is to have enough things that go boom. Now we're getting into the real meat and potatoes of the video. The mobs. As Minecraft grew as a game, more and more creatures were added to the world. From harmless farm animals, bees, and villagers to the dangerous mobs like creepers, piglins, illagers, otherwise known as raiders, and many more. The only ones really requiring anything strategic when it comes to non-hostile mobs? Villagers. As you can trade with them very specifically in order to level them up, as well as give them a certain job, steering them towards having exactly the stuff you want for sale in order to help you further down the line. However, when it comes to hostile mobs, the situation is the polar opposite. Minecraft can be a very unforgiving game to the uninitiated, as with the amount of unfriendly creatures in the game, you can get killed very often, very easily, if you're not careful. Zombies are the most straightforward ones, coming with several variations, but most of them are very slow. However, they have a mechanic that when you are attacked by one zombie, more of its friends will begin to join in on your location. Some of them can't have armor and weapons, making them a bigger threat, especially if they manage to encircle you. Staying quick on your feet is arguably the best and probably the only way to turn zombies from a threat to more of a nuisance. With skeletons, the situation is not much different. Being the archers of Minecraft's basic roster of mobs, they can be a little tricky to deal with, as they can often shoot arrows from places where you can't see them immediately, hiding their line of sight, and they can sometimes pop up just randomly in the dark, especially if you don't have any torches covering there. So, strategically placing torches as well, Strat fans, is a good option. Lacking a shield is a mistake when it comes to approaching skeletons, as they make fighting them all the more difficult. With a shield, you can block arrows and close the distance pretty quickly to dispatch them. Staying on the move applies to skeletons as much as it does to zombies, especially since skeletons may miss their shots, hit another enemy mob, and have its aggro be transferred onto the skeleton instead of you. There's a little bonus when a skeleton kills a creeper, the creeper has a very high chance to drop a music disc. I say right foot creep. Creepers are the silent death of Minecraft. I can't tell you how many times I have been snuck up on by a creeper when I'm just minding my business. Any miner will tell you that when they're mining away and they look behind, they hear that dreaded tss, they know what's gonna come. And arguably the biggest source of rage you can find in vanilla is the creeper. Sneaky, self-detonating mobs that make no sound until it is too late. When you hear the telltale sound of a dynamite fuse going off behind you, you already know it's a creeper and you know you're fucked. You better hope that you have enough armor and health, or that you can turn around and try and block some of the damage with your shield in time. The creeper sneaks up to players and explodes. Simple as that. Somehow they always find themselves in places you least expect or want to meet a creeper. Most commonly, tight cave spaces or your own house. The tricks to surviving a creeper is to kill it before it explodes, or at least get away from it in case it already is too close. A weapon with knockback does the trick pretty well to push the creeper away from its trigger range. When they explode, creepers do not drop any. Thing. When they are killed before they explode, they drop gunpowder, which is a key component for TNT. So learning how to effectively hunt creepers is essential to getting TNT and progressing in Minecraft itself. So the best approach is to just pepper them with arrows from a distance and not risk any close combat with the 
these walking TNT dispensers. In case you are armored enough that the creepers can't really do much to you, you still want to protect your base and chest, because creepers blow up all blocks around them. Having a water bucket or a lava bucket on hand is good, as when the creepers explode while in water or lava, they do not destroy or damage any blocks around them. However, they still damage the player and other entities. The final mob within the starting world of Minecraft is the purple-eyed, lanky fellow known for carrying around random blocks and not liking eye contact. The Endermen, the shy guys of Minecraft, are the source of many Minecraft theories, especially ones regarding their own origin, as well as the origin of the world of Minecraft itself. They pose no threat to the player, however, as long as you don't look directly at them. If you do, they will get very upset and self-conscious about their looks, which will prompt them to attack. They do a lot of damage, teleport, and are pretty fast. Definitely do not try to fight them right off the bat. Endermen hate water, so they will avoid it whenever means necessary. Using water to deter them or fighting them in the rain will help you out, though they aren't very present when it rains. Killing Endermen will drop Ender Pearls, which will help a lot in the later game, allowing the player to teleport by throwing the pearl and teleporting to where the pearl lands, though taking some damage in the process. So don't use it too much, Strafans. Once you find enough shiny diamonds to wrap yourself up in an absolute bind, you may head off to the Nether, which is by all accounts Mycroft's version of Detroit. <laughs> The first mobs you will see here are the zombie piglins. They mind their own business, so the best strategy is to leave them alone. If you, for any reason unknown to both yourself and God, decide to pick a fight with one, expect to be quickly swarmed as every zombie piglin within the same zip code will arrive to join the fight against you. They will not relent until they dispatch you or until you build away from them, but the aggro will remain on you for a good while. So it's best to just leave them alone. Just leave them be, let them do their own thing, and you know, alright bruv, I'll let you be. Regular pigmen may give you some trouble as they are armed with both swords axes or bows in large numbers they can be an issue to deal with but the best strategy is to simply wear something golden on you like an armor piece thus turning them passive giving piglins golden nuggets or gold ingot will initiate a trade with them they will give you something in return this trade is random and the stuff they give you can range anywhere from something very very useful and valuable to simply trash but usually it's trash hoglins are large warthogs in another and deal a lot of damage while also moving pretty fast they are a great source of pork chops if you run out of food while in the nether. If the hogs jump on you, planting a certain type of mushroom will ward them off. Be mindful of the geist. Ooh man, these little screaming ghost guys have caught me once or twice. These floating fire jellyfish are known for their crying sound and shoot explosive fireballs at the player. Blocking them does not negate the damage and also blows up the terrain, which can cause you to fall to your death. You can launch the fireball back at the geist like a tennis ball or just shoot them with a bow. It is important to note that beds become explosives in the nether. All right, good night gamer. <laughs> as you can't sleep there. So many experienced players turn beds into traps for their fellow players or for many other reasons. Just be mindful not to catch on fire, as water does not work in the nether and the fire burns longer than in the overworld. Once you find what you need in the nether, that being blaze rods, you can create the eyes of ender and setting off to find the end. Tossing the eyes and following them as they float around a stronghold that houses the portals to Minecraft's final dimension. Float is the best way to describe the end dimension. Literal islands floating around an endless void. Nothing but endermen in sight. Here lies the final challenge and arguably the one that demands the most strategy to beat. Every preparation across Minecraft has been leading the player, building them up for this final battle, the Ender Dragon. We've all seen these prep videos of how to beat the Ender Dragon. While it could be tempting for many Minecraft veterans such as myself to simply destroy the crystals in the end to keep the dragon perched at the center part and just whittle him down with a sword, that actually is not as time efficient. As we know, in the end, beds are explosive, same as with the nether. So it's even better once you destroy the crystals instead of chopping them up with a sword you put a bed there when you right click on it it explodes so theoretically when he lands there he'll land right on the top of it perch it when he makes contact with it it'll explode doing a large chunk of health and you just do this over and over again but it doesn't take as long as before because before when the dragon perches in the center you just have to slowly hit him away with a sword because when he's perched there you can't shoot him he's impervious to arrows when that happens but if you put a bed on the top of the perch or some players even use an ender pearl to teleport up onto one of the towers, destroy a node, and then build up, put a bed, and then the ender dragon when he sloops around will hit the bed, causing an explosion, doing a lot of damage. So really it's up to you guys how you decide because every Minecraft player is different how to beat the ender dragon, but those are my personal three favorites on how to beat him. Finally, we reach the final biome of Minecraft, and my personal favorite, hidden deep within the bowels of the overworld, under even the deepest caves, lies the necropolis, a domain where sight serves no purpose and every echo is a death sentence, where you can find the strong 
strongest mob in Minecraft, at least the non-boss variation, the ward. It's entirely blind and relies solely on hearing to find the player. Every movement triggers skull sensors that will send information of the player's location to the warden. Most of the times, the warden is docile until a sound wakes it up. Once awake, it'll inflict a blindness debuff on any players in the vicinity. Very fast, overwhelmingly strong, the warden is a force you can't take head on. Immune to fire and drowning with more health than any boss, non-boss mob in the game, as well as long-range sonic blast, finding the warden is near impossible. Believe me, I've tried. Unless you use a mod of some sort to get yourself more powerful armor or something, vanilla, I have struggled so hard to beat the warden, regardless of the gear you have. The best strategy in dealing with it, and the entirety of Necropolis itself, is to sneak around, using wool and carpets to silence your every step in order to get the amazing loot hidden within this biome. If afflicted with the blindness from the warden, a bucket of milk should be close at hand to immediately remove the debuff. No cows were harmed in the harvesting of this milk today. <laughs> as a Minecraft veteran, and any of you Minecraft starters out there, should bring buckets of milk, as many as you can provide with you, when delving Necropolis, the End, the Nether, anywhere, because they help save Save your ass when you're debuffed by these advanced enemies. Minecraft comes with a plethora of items, many having a lot of different purposes or different situations. Beds becoming high-powered explosives in the nether in the end. Ender pearls are used to gain or close distance, or simply to get a better angle at your opponent. Milk buckets for removing all negative effects currently afflicting the player. One of the most well-known and well-used items for various situations, from PvE to PvP, is the Totem of Undying. Found on Pillager of Ogres, a rare spawn for the pillagers, this item allows the player to cheat death at the cost of the totem. Second most strategic of the items, as everyone knows, is the water bucket. As water fully negates fall damage, from clumsy players falling off bridges to skilled speedrunners, the water bucket is an absolute clutch when it comes to dealing with fall damage. Arguably one of the biggest killers in Minecraft today. <laughs> is fall damage. Though it does take a fair bit of skill to place it down while plummeting to your doom, it is imperative that you learn that skill to be able to negate any chance of fall damage killing. Enchanted items also have various strategic implications, but considering how many enchantments there are in Minecraft, talking about each and every one individually would turn this video into a collage of dissertation. The most common ones are feather falling that slows down falling and reduces fall damage, water walking that turns water into ice allowing the player to walk on water, Mend, that uses XP to repair items, that way you don't have to worry about your favorite hoe breaking in the various enchantments for water breeding. There's so many enchantments in the game. Personally, my favorites would be Mend, like I mentioned earlier, or Unbreaking. There's a lot of them that I would personally would go with, but the more enchantments you get on an item, the better it is. Potions unlock a whole new level of power for the player, from simple health potions to speed and even super strength to ease your gameplay. Though they can be hard to create, bar looking up a guide online, they can be imperative to many engagements in the game and can trivialize many encounters in the game. So I hope this video helped shed some light on the various strategies in Minecraft and helps you be fully prepared for whatever might await you on your next Minecraft session. If you like this video, stay tuned for more, as I will be covering various other games where strategy isn't at the forefront, but is an underlying key mechanic. And remember as always, if you enjoy these videos, leave a like down below, comment what's your favorite part of Minecraft or any game or any game you want me to cover on the channel. Check me your sub too, if you like the content that much, because like I said, I'm gonna be doing a lot more with y'all coming up so i hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as i did making it remember as always strat fans to keep it strategic colonel out